Hey everyone, it's Dory and Bobby here. We love to travel and we love to travel with our buddy Kermi. So on this trip, we are gonna take you to Denver, Colorado. Here's a glimpse inside Denver Airport as we make our way towards the train, which will be catching the train that will take us to the Union Station and not far from there is going to be our hotel that we'll be staying at tonight. So here's a little trip on how we get to that train. And as you can see inside Denver Airport, it's a very unique airport with a lot of conspiracy theories that surround it. So if you ever have some time, definitely research Denver Airport and the conspiracy theories behind it. It's quite interesting. Okay, so now we're heading out these doors. As you can see, right across is the Westin Hotel. So if you ever stay there, you're directly right across the airport. And now we're taking down the escalators towards the train that will take us to the Union Station and we'll be aboarding the A-Line train. It's about a 37 minute time ride that will take us all the way towards the Union Station and in total there are seven stops being the Union Station being the last stop. So tonight we're going to be staying at the Indigo Hotel which is about an eight minute walk from the station itself. So as you can see here we're, we're leaving the train and out you see is the Union Station right ahead of us which is so beautiful, so beautiful at night and of course during the day too it's very beautiful. Alrighty, so we are making our way towards our stay tonight and we are going to stay at Hotel Indigo which is again right across the Union Station. Very short walk and as you can walk in you can already feel the warmth of the ambiance that this hotel has to offer. I can tell you that we had such an amazing time, so relaxing and really the atmosphere here was just like top 10. So here's a little bit of a tour. So that was a little sitting area where you can enjoy coffee, you can sit down, um, enjoy a little few drinks, just relax. Here is the lobby area where there is a little store that you can buy some goodies, some drinks, some waters, whatever it may be. They had this little whiskey flight that you can purchase and then also too, they did have a hot apple cider and hot cocoa stand as well. So very beautiful lobby. As we make our way up to the sixth floor, we are greeted by this amazing picture of Denver. And tonight we are staying in room 628. I absolutely loved the rooms. They are so simplistic, so open. The neutral colors were fantastic. I love all of the wood. And of course, we brought our other, um, we call them our kids, our, since we don't have any kids, these are our kids, so all of them travel with us as well. Then we walked towards our dinner reservation tonight at Tupelo Honey. We've heard great, amazing reviews about this place, so we had to give this a try. We did make reservations on open table for tonight's reservation. And inside, just like your hotel, very inviting, very warm atmosphere. And I will take you through what we ordered for our drinks and what we had for dinner. So they do have a paper menu for all of their drinks that they are serving. And I personally got the Tupelo Honey Margarita and my husband got the Two Paloma. So here we are, cheers. Our first appetizer were the biscuits and they were amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, you also get a little bit of blueberry and butter on the side. On to dinner. So Kermie is pictured with the fried chicken, mac and cheese, and the Parmesan and rosemary potato cracklins. Oh my goodness, the best fried chicken I have ever had. Maybe the best meal I've had in a while. Definitely go to, to Pelo Honey. They have over they have 18 locations across the US. Definitely make a reservation and tell me otherwise because this is the best fried chicken ever. Okay, so here we are the next morning. We were up a little early and my husband thought it was snowing outside, so we got up early, got dressed 
and went outside, but unfortunately no snow, but we did enjoy the morning. We made a little walk around our block and eventually made our way back to the same area where Tupelo Honey was. And we went to the Whole Foods to go and grab some coffee. This is inside the Whole Foods store. So pretty, so cute. I love this Eat Real Union Station. Ties fit with the Union Station that we arrived to last night. And off we go towards our next destination. We are now heading towards Hammond's Factory Store. And here's Kermie in front of the Candy Express. And here at Han Hammond's Candy Factory, they offer free tours and they run every half hour. The tours last approximately 30 minutes and they actually, we had a small group of, I think a total of us was about 10 people. And they take you through the back of their facility to show you how they make candy and so forth. So you'll see some footage. Also, Kermie was pretty lucky. Got one of these Hammond's hats that I really wanted. They're really just for the kids, but you know, he got lucky. So as you can see here, this gentleman is actually rolling out some candy. Uh, from what I was hearing from the tour is that they're already making candy for Christmas season of next year. So they work on these tables that have a little flame in the back that keeps the candy warm so they can model and stretch out the candy as they go. And here you see some other workers as well uh, rolling out the candy and cutting them. So such a really cool tour to see to get some behind the scenes of how candy is actually really made. So some interesting facts along the tour here. Um, and this was another part of the back area where they were uh, packaging candy. They were also talking about marshmallow making and so forth. Also, besides candy, they also make popcorn here. They have birthday cake, as you can see, sweet and salty, sriracha flavor, honey peanuts, all of these fun flavors. And this, of course, is Hammond's uh, factory store again. And you can book their tours, I believe, 24 hours ahead of time. And you do want to book them, um, you know, as soon as possible because they do get booked up really fast. We booked ours, I think, a couple weeks before we actually came to Denver. Some fun candy, some candy pizza, sushi, and some tacos. And I thought this was pretty cute. <laughs> and of course, we had to all get a picture together as a family inside the store. So as we make our way towards our next destination, we are actually now driving past the past Colorado State Capitol. And the last time we were here back in August, this whole building was fenced around and we were unable to see the one mile above sea level, which is engraved on the steps of the Capitol. So we'll actually come back here after our next destination and we'll show you that footage. Our next stop is the Molly Brown Museum. So here at the Molly Brown House, we actually purchased tickets ahead of time and it is a self-guided tour that takes about 45 minutes to an hour. There are three levels to this house, so you get to explore each of the rooms. And of course, you learn more about Molly Brown, the history, the inspirational story of this Titanic heroine. And also she was an engaged social activist too. So you get to learn about her history, her family's history, and learn more about the artifacts that are in the house. Now there are no recordings in the home itself, so here are some pictures to show you throughout the home. And if you ever get a chance and you go to Denver, definitely check out the Molly Brown house. I really thought it was super interesting to know a little bit more about her, her story, and of course the history of her. And in the movie Titanic, Molly Brown was played by Kathy Bates, who lended a suit to Leonardo DiCaprio in order to go to the dinner that evening with Rose. Next stop, the state capitol. So here we are at Denver's state capitol. Such a beautiful, nice building up on a hill. 
And the last time, like I was said earlier, we were back, we were here in August and it was all fenced off. So thankfully we could go up the stairs, see the, uh, the little sign here that says one mile above sea level and take our pictures. And one last footage of the state capitol here. So now we're making our way towards 16th Street Mall, which is actually located in the heart of downtown Denver. And it's over one, over a mile and a quarter long. So there's free shuttles, there's free rides that you can go along, and there's over 250 stores, dining areas that you can sit down and eat, and just a comfortable sitting area that you can definitely just you know, maybe people watch or whatnot, but there's some really cool things along 16th Street. Next stop, the Convention Center. So here at the Convention Center, there are a lot of artistic statues outside of the building, and we specifically wanted to come here to see this big blue bear statue. So we kept walking and came across the Curtis Denver. This hotel is so unique, so much fun, a lot of bright colors, and just a lot of uniqueness to this hotel. Um, so if you ever get a chance, look up this hotel. They actually have themed rooms and actually a themed horror level of the hotel. So definitely check it out. Uh, we plan on maybe coming back here at some point and definitely taking advantage of one of their rooms. Uh, but as you can see, very unique hotel. And I've also read upon arrival, you actually get a fresh cookie. So I'm not sure how true that is. Next up, we are heading towards uh, Larimer Square. So at Larimer Square is an outside dining area. Um, it's very beautiful. They have lights up up top. They have restaurants outside. You can have some drinks. You can just walk around, maybe eat a little bit of something. Um, but I'm sure this is pretty at night. We didn't come back um, at night, but during the day it already looks beautiful itself. So just a nice place to relax, have some fun, and to really enjoy. And I'm sure there's a lot of great shops as well. Ma majority of them were closed at the time that we were here, but I'm sure it's a fun shopping area too. Okay, so at this point of the day, we're getting pretty hungry. So now we're gonna head over to our dinner reservations we have at the Blue Moon Brewing Company. We took the train from Union Station and got off the first stop and we actually walked to the Blue Moon restaurant, which is not too far from the train station itself. And so we actually were here back in August, had a great time and really just enjoyed the, the food, the ambiance of the restaurant. So we had to make another pit stop here before we head home. So you'll get to see what we had for dinner and then also what drinks we tried um, at the Blue Moon Brewery. All right, let's head on inside. So they do have a little self-guided tour that you can do. Um, the menu, the food and beer menu for Blue Moon is online. So they do have you scan the little barcode and the menu pops up. Here's the inside of the restaurant. Um, in the back, there are the brewery. Um, and you can definitely, when you do, this, when you do the self-guided tour, you'll see the brewery area and just some other things. And I'll show you some footage from that too. So let's just walk around for a bit and show you a little bit of the restaurant. And here are some of their beers that they have on tap. Okay, so my husband and I both, I got the Moon Haze Pale Ale and my husband got the Imperial Blueberry. For appetizers, we got the pretzel bites and also some wings to start our dinner off. Up next is my husband's review of the drinks we had. It tastes like if I had some like, like look it, it tastes like if I had some like hot chocolate Yeah. and there's some ch hot chocolate residue on the bottom and I fill it up with water, the, if I filled up the whatever container of water and I drank it, it's like, so that's probably a combination of uh, hot chocolate and uh, dish soap. This is water, not just uh, like which one was this one? Ice coffee? Ice coffee. Ice coffee mocha or ice coffee? This one's good. I could have this one on the way to work. It'd be good if I'm gonna go jogging to the park. This is good if I'm on my way to work. 
This one's good, like, for Christmas. Yours is good for nothing. Julep moon. I thought you said it was a mint. It is a julep moon. This was made uh, specifically for the Kentucky Derby last year, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, it was going to be only available here and at the Kentucky Derby. It almost tastes like chamomile tea if it was put in the fridge. Chamomile tea with like a couple of droplets of NyQuil. <laughs> so if you were to like leave it in the fridge for 24 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, this probably cures like cold, flu, maybe even coronavirus. I don't know. I feel healthier already. <laughs> well, thank you, Bobby, for that amazing beer review. Uh, but I'm going to take you through a little bit of the little tour that they have that you can do at the restaurant here. Um, so I'm just going to let the footage roll. Um, but if you're ever in Denver, we definitely recommend this spot for some good drinks. Um, the food was, the appetizers were really good. Uh, however, their dinners were okay. We both had the chicken sandwich. It wasn't as great as what we expected it to be. Uh, we heard some good reviews about it, but for us, it wasn't one that we probably would choose again. So, but anyways, let me take you through the rest of the tour here. Okay, time to make our way back to our hotel and just in the nick of time we actually caught the train right on time instead of having to wait another 15 minutes um, so now we're making our way back to the Union Station and here's a footage of our hotel from the train itself and then to end our night we went to the local grocery store and got some of these uh, donuts that are called punch keys and they were very tasty all right guys, it is morning time and we are headed back to Phoenix, Arizona, our hometown, our home city. And Denver was such an awesome trip. We had such an amazing time. Uh, we tried some new things, did some new experiences. So off we go. All right, back on the train we go from the Union Station, heading back towards the airport. So here's some footage of us getting on the train and a last view shot of the Union Station. And again, we boarded, boarded, we actually boarded the A-Line train, which is track one at the Union Station. So as we board the train, again, we did buy our tickets online and that was our ticket towards the airport and this will take about 37 minutes to get to the airport in total. So a longer way I'm just going to show you some footage from our travel from the Union Station all the way to the airport. Just how you can see the buildings all around and as we get closer to the airport. Um, if any of you have ever been to Denver, the airport is actually far away from town. It seems like it's in the middle of nowhere. So as you see this footage, you'll see all the city, the buildings, and then it gets starts getting desolate, more deserty, a lot less trees, and you'll see here in just a few seconds. I thought this was a beautiful shot as we were coming up on this bridge. You could see a view of Colorado, a um, view of Denver actually, and the 
views of the mountains with snow on top. It was just a beautiful ride. And as you can see now, it starts to get a little bit less, uh, a lot less buildings, a lot less trees. And really, like I said, in the middle of nowhere is Denver Airport. And here it is coming up in the distance that you can see the Westin Hotel. And now we're pulling up to the station. Okay, so we're off the train and heading towards the check-in point uh, for security check. And as we were going towards uh, the airport here, there's a little time capsule that we came across. And again, another cool thing to see at the airport itself here at Denver. All right, before we go in, we're actually gonna take you up one more stop and it's up these escalators and it's right underneath the Westin Hotel. You see this open space here. You get to see a view of the beautiful Denver itself and just some breathtaking views from this point. So if you get a chance to come here, definitely take your time, explore Denver because Denver in itself is very unique, has a lot of history within it. And not only that, check out the Denver airport and the history behind it. And of course, the conspiracy theories that surround the airport itself. All right, guys, we are heading towards our gate here. We're taking the train once again. And uh, I lied, we're gonna take you one more stop. And this was the plane that you saw in the very beginning. I uh, just thought this plane was very interesting. It hangs from the, I believe it's the third level that we're up and this plane has a little Colorado flag, it has a Lakers sticker, and then also the California flag. So I've meant to do some research about this plane, but I think it's just so cool that this plane is just hanging up in the ceiling. And another view of the uniqueness of the D Denver airport kind of reminds me of the ancient Mayan times. I'm sure it's an all correlation with the conspiracy around this airport, but Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and also subscribe to this page as my husband and I will be traveling and sharing our journey with you guys along with Kermi as well. So stay tuned for our next adventure and we will keep you guys posted.